Do you support high-speed rail? Did you know that some of the quote-unquote high-speed rail trains being proposed in this current administration are not fast enough and don't use clean technology? That's why I'm asking you to support electrified high-speed rail trains with dedicated rights-of-way and grade separations. I know, that sounds like a handful, and you may be asking yourself, what's wrong with what we're doing now? Although many trains seem to have the same appearance, comparing 125 mile per hour diesel trains to 220 mile per hour electrified trains is like comparing a motor scooter to a golf cart or a gas powered car to an electric car. One is polluting and the other can be potentially green, that is not pollute. Let me tell you more. Electrified trains are the world standard for high speed rail. They receive their power through electric catenary lines. The electric catenary lines get their power from electricity generated by a number of sources, including renewable energy resources. On the other hand, diesel trains get their power from diesel fuel stored in the train itself. You may ask, why can't we go with diesel trains first, then upgrade to electric trains later? Unfortunately, neither we nor the Earth have time to tinker with diesel trains for 10, 20, 30 years and then upgrade to electric trains. We need to prepare for an oil-depleted society, where we can't depend on oil as much as we did in the 20th century to power our transportation. We are already past peak oil production. The proposal for diesel trains are remnants from the early 90s, a time when Amtrak's survival was being threatened and train usage was low compared to the pre-World War II era. It is now a different time. We are confronting climate change and oil depletion in an economic period where the fast movement of goods and people are critical if we are to be competitive on the world stage. The U.S. needs to have another option when gasoline reaches $6 a gallon or more. High-performance electric trains are far superior in reliability, safety, and smoothness of ride than diesel trains. Besides, it is predicted that once the already approved electrified line from San Francisco to Los Angeles is open, riders will not want to go back to older and slower technology. So why waste our time with old technology? Let me tell you about the diesel trains GPS-type tracking system which uses the human eye for train control. According to tests done in Europe's TGV system, it just so happens that the human eye can only judge oncoming trains in difficult conditions of fog, snow, or rain at up to 125 miles per hour. With electric trains, the train is controlled by a continuous information transmission, which is transmitted back to a centrally located station. So even when trains are traveling 220 miles per hour, another train going 220 miles per hour can follow four to five minutes after the first train left the station. Grade separation is also important. These are examples of grade separated crossings, and these are examples of on-grade crossings. You can see here that the grade separated crossings allow for virtually no collisions compared to on-grade crossings. Grade separations also allow for unimpeded access for both trains and cars. Dedicated rights of way are also important. Many train operators need to be able to access the tracks in order to allow for businesses to compete on a level playing field. What if the infrastructure was separated from trains altogether? The infrastructure can be owned by a private company, similar to a condo association, where a development agency owns the property and individuals own the condos on the property. To conclude, please think about supporting electrified high-speed rail trains with dedicated rights-of-way with grade separations. We don't have time to wait. Write to your state representative today and visit StandUpForTrains.com for more information.